It's rare, but sometimes a film concept can make the jump from the silver to the small screen and bring you that same cinematic flair on a week-to-week basis. But more often than not, TV counterparts just can't recapture a movie's magic. We're looking at you, Serpico. Who? Welcome to Film House. <laughs> Welcome to Filmhouse. I'm your host this week, Elise Willems. I'm joined by Adam Kovic. Hello. James Willems. Hello. Ryan Haley. Hey, film fans. This week's Filmhouse is brought to you by Quip. If you go to getquip.com slash film right now, you'll get your first refill for free. Mm. Um, we have a fun little general topic mm-hmm. this week. And uh, we've all been there where we've loved a movie. And then we see that trailer on TV where it says, you know, uh, my big fat Greek life mm-hmm. is coming to TV. It's going to yeah. be yeah. every yeah. week. Parenthood's going to be on yeah. on Thursdays? <laughs> yeah. Every Thursday night. N- no dates. No hanging out with friends. What mm-hmm. happened after um, Watchmen, I wondered? <laughs> <laughs> everyone does. Uh, so, yeah, we're kind of talking about those movies, which they they make for a great feature story, and then someone goes, okay, we should adapt them. Like, mm-hmm. let's, let's milk the fuck out of this. And then they make a... TV show that just kind of misses the mark. Mm. Uh, a little bit of trivia for you guys. You know, it was the very first uh, movie to go from film to television show. The uh, um, From the Earth to the Moon TV series. Uh, Man uh, Uses Sprinkler mm-hmm. um, by Thomas Edison. Was it Casablanca? 1897. It was that the TV show about that that train coming yes, towards the camera. Yes, train comes to camera. <laughs> <laughs> Every week, TV yeah. show. Uh, no, I don't know. Is it Casablanca? Oh, I was asking you guys. Oh, yeah. oh, I have no it clue. I said be. trivia question for you. Oh. I need to know uh, this. Okay. <laughs> well, we are also, we're also coming up with our theories as to why some movies work as TV shows and mm-hmm. why some don't. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I kind of wanted to like just kind of take a look back at first and look at some of the ones that just did not make the mark. Yeah. Sure. Um, what, what would you say did work, Elise, or didn't? Oh, uh, if you well, want to start your list I was going to start with what didn't, <laughs> no, as, I, as I just uh, yeah, posited. But, but at least, <laughs> but at least <laughs> what if you completely okay. changed all yeah. of your Hold plans? Okay, all right. no, Hold on, no, 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 go back. No, back. Another, yeah. another question for you. What about shows that became movies? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'd rather review The Joker. <laughs> what is the Dump Street? Are the movies coming out? I just heard about Twin Peaks. Explain Darsky it. and Hutch. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, thank you, Adam. <laughs> Um, well, I'm also curious how many of these you guys have, have are familiar with because some no. of them I did not know existed, like this Ferris Bueller TV show. Yeah. yeah. I knew it existed. Um, I've never seen it, though. Yeah. Well, you want an, I, I can tell you, let's just get right in the potatoes. Why did this fail? Well, it's because there was already another show that was a ripoff of Ferris Bueller if it were a television show called Parker Lewis Can't Lose. Never, uh, I've never, never heard, heard, of heard of that. I've never heard of that in my life. What? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Parker Lewis Can't Lose was a show... I don't know when it came out in relation to the Ferris Bueller show, but it was basically basically Ooh. someone was like, "What if we made Ferris Bueller as a television show?" Mm-hmm. And so they made Parker Lewis can't lose, and he's this cool guy who, like, I was always getting out of trouble uh. and stuff like that, and he had his wacky friends. And this predates the. Ferris I don't Bueller know where I... the timing is. All I'm saying is that there was room enough for both to exist. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so, if that's the case, it's probably a bad idea. Is this what Van Wilder's based on oh. too? Yes, it, and then it's considering the topic is uh, movie or television shows that become movies, mm-hmm. this became Van Wilder. <laughs> <laughs> this looks very Canadian. It does. I, I can say that. Whoa. Yeah. Yep, oh, it's okay. Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the concept though for the uh, the Ferris Bueller's Day Off show is it he every day he has a day off, or is it just day in the life of Ferris Bueller? In which all we know about him is from the movie is when he takes a day off. I feel like it's probably not. He doesn't. He probably doesn't take a day off every single time. Mm. Well, it's, it's just yeah, called Ferris Bueller. He dropped the day so off. So it's just about his life. Gotcha. Because yeah. there there was a meeting where they're like, how can he take a day off every day? He's just <laughs> unemployed. Well, it also has this weird moment where it draws attention to the fact that there's a movie, and he takes out a cardboard cutout of, of, Matthew, Fer- Broderick? of Matthew Broderick, and then he buzzes like he chainsaws it. Oh. He, he saws oh. it in half. Out with the old. What is he new. saying? Yeah. Like, what, what? What is his meta commentary here? It's the sound of the yeah. chance. Yeah. That's to Tootsie. Goodbye. I mean, here's to the thing: the, the show, the sh- the movie Ferris Bueller is pretty meta. So this doesn't seem too far fetched that the meta aspect of the show would acknowledge. 
the movie. Yeah, because mm-hmm. Ferris breaks the fourth wall. Yeah, okay. he breaks the fourth wall. And so he's doing it here. Gotcha. Okay. Jennifer Aniston plays his sister. Jennifer Whoa. Aniston, you oh. said yes yeah. to everything before she was famous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's talent behind this show. Should so I can get my nipples through there. Why? Just before or after Leprechaun. Why did this TV show <laughs> fail? Say, why? Yeah, why? Um, I mean, if, I guess if at this time, if you're making a show and it, it's been, it's not like weird science enough where it's been 15 years since the movie came out and you're now making a show out of it or like a Fargo where it's so so long now that you could kind of do whatever. When you think of Ferris Bueller, you think of Matthew Broderick. Yes. And then when you call attention to him and go, he's not in the show. You got to deal with me. You go, yeah. I'm out. You got Charlie Slatter. <laughs> Have Who? you seen this show? Have you seen? Has no, I didn't seen know it this? existed I, until four I mean, minutes ago. I would, okay. I would bet that the reason something like this failed is because the movie Ferris Bueller, while good, is completely 100% carried by the charisma of... Matthew Broderick wow. and the filmmaker. I think it's right? like a pedophile. Well, John Hughes. It's John exactly. Hughes. John yeah. Hughes. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, it's, it's just it's his it's his vision and his like the world he's crafted. Mm-hmm. This already feels when you take it down, and we this is we're not dealing in the era of television that we're in now, where television costs way more than it did in uh, the eighties, in the eighties and early nineties or whatever. It's becoming almost like film budget level things yeah. like Game of Thrones. And so as soon as you remove that that vision and charisma from the movie, then you're left with, what, just an obnoxious guy in high school. Yeah, and if that's kid. what you want to watch, you're going to watch Parker Lewis Can't Lose. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, without having seen it, um, uh, uh, I, I would just say kind of, the, probably the problem with a lot of these on the list is is the just problem of a little goes a long way, you know, and it's hard to stretch something cool like a, you know, this cool concept of this. Oh, this guy that can just get away with anything into twenty hours of TV. It's like, all right, I've seen this. I got it in an hour and a half of this cool yes. John Hughes movie. I don't need to see it every week. Yeah, the, uh, the short-lived Uncle Buck TV show. I'm from sorry, I don't need Uncle Buck every week. <laughs> exactly. This I think falls in the same camp that you're describing. Oh, pardon me. I uh, is Uncle Buck the one? No, I'm thinking of the what's the other Woods movie with John Candy? Oh, uh, yeah, the the one where he eats uh, all Dan Aykroyd. Uh, he's right yeah, outdoors. Yeah, 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 I always think of that one where he eats the fat. It kind of looks like John Candy. So it's Charles Meany. Okay, who of course. You might be familiar with. His I am career. not. Explain. No. His career. Seen him around. What's yeah. Jennifer Aniston doing in this? That's not her. Okay. But I, well, every woman around this time did look like Jennifer Aniston. There, there are certain things that you see and like, and you're like, man, there's must be so much more beneath the surface. Could you imagine? Fifth Element. Mm-hmm. There's a Fifth Element TV show. Oh, mm-hmm. I didn't know that. There, no, I'm saying if there was. <laughs> oh. If there was, you might be like, oh, okay. Yeah. This is, makes sense because when you watch Fifth Element, you're like, this is great. And can you imagine how much more of oh. this world there is to explore? Yeah, you're into the universe when and going you, to see guys, more Guys, I got his it. name wrong. It's Kevin Meany. Okay. No Sorry, one knew. that's why you didn't recognize him. Oh, no one knew. Kevin Meany. Um, mm-hmm. Pardon me. Still don't know who he is. But when you watch Ferris Bueller, you're like, oh, you've given me a cross-section of every element right. of life. You've shown me everything I need to see mm-hmm. about this world. And then you combine that with other John Hughes movies, and you're like, okay, well, I, I have a full, I understand. Mm-hmm. This was a great movie. It. This is okay. a great, this is a great cross section. I don't need any more. So. It's a good standalone. Okay, yeah. opposite land. You're in the writers' meeting. Uh-huh. You're one of the writers now, tasked with making Ferris Bueller a watchable show. Right. What does he do in his first episode to make Ferris Bueller's day interesting? He cuts uh, Standy <laughs> of Matthew Broderick in half. You're hired, but you're not going to have a job in two <laughs> oh, weeks. Oh no. I mean, I would I would uh, reinvent the Ferris Bueller wheel, you know, and kind of oh. just have the the guy that talks to the camera, the smart aleck kid talking to the camera, be like the only thing that crosses over, and then kind of just and they did that with Save with the Bell. Oh, Zach Morris talks to the camera, mm. and he's and kind he's of a, a smart aleck, and he's yeah. yeah, he is kind of a sociopath, yeah. but yeah, but a it's whole yeah series. okay, but but that's more about the ensemble, you know, mm-hmm. the whole. As opposed to also, one how person. much uh, we can get off Ferris Bueller any minute, uh, which is fine. But <laughs> <Yeah>. how much <laughs> brand <laughs> power is with Ferris Bueller's day off? I think Save Ferris probably got the most out of it. <laughs> I uh, think it was, I mean that movie was a huge hit. Yeah. Ferris Bueller, but his there's a reason off. why awesome. most of those John Hughes movies don't have sequels. Like Home Alone is the only one that I can think of. Right? I don't think there is a reason that most of. Those, I mean, I think that if all those movies were made today, they would all have sequels. But it's well, like, yeah, but I'm saying they probably will have like seventeen I'm candles. Like, do we think Breakfast Club Two would be able to in any way? What would it be? What would it, like the whole yeah, movie is uh, the whole you know, the whole right. the whole movie is all these people come together for one day and then leave changed. Mm-hmm. 
And like the whole you, concept I, of it is based on how much can change in a day. I can already right, tell right? you. That's I agree. Like I the John Hughes s- thing that he yeah. does is how much can change in a day. But what yeah. if they do it every week? I think <laughs> yeah. you could make a Breakfast Club anthology show where every season it's a new group of kids. That mm-hmm. So like your season will only take place over the span of maybe like, you know, the three weeks that they have detention or whatever, mm-hmm. right? And then you would move on to another set of kids, oh, the new breakfast. Yeah. The it's like party down for detention. The, the only problem is that the, the, ki- the, the best thing about <laughs> Breakfast Club is that the kids aren't even kids. They're just... They're 27, I know. <laughs> no, no, no. Let, I, let me finish. They're, they're literally just archetypes drawn into characters. Uh-huh. So it's the popular them, girl, the nerd, the sport. No, I'm saying that's yeah. what's great about it. So even if you brought in other kids, what is it? Just another jock? Yeah. Like you've already painted all. You've mm. you've shown everything that high school by seeing only these handful of kids. You know everything about the whole high school. What about like an emo gothy type girl with dandruff? I guess what I'm saying <laughs> is I think Starsky and Hutch could be a movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, another show that was like egregiously bad mm-hmm. is the My Big Fat Greek Life. It says you you watch this one? I didn't, but <laughs> I, I mean. Well, they it, didn't have Aiden. We're going off the stigma, I guess, <laughs> right? Like well, that. I know the the main dude is it Josh Groban or whatever. Who's Josh Groban? Who's Aiden. the piano guy? Who? Aiden, the, the singer. Is it Aiden? It's not Aiden Quinn. No, Aiden from uh, Sex and the this City. This guy plays oh. her husband. This guy right here. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. the original guy, Colin didn't Firth? come back. He didn't come back. Well, no, that's Colin I Farth. I think all the fam- oh. all the family came back. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Just well, not the main actor. Well, John, Joey Fatone didn't come back. John Corbett is the same, I think. Yeah, yeah that's the, the one. husband. But yes. I mean, you're also taking these these single cam films and doing them as a three camera sitcom with a laugh mm-hmm. track. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Which just feels horribly like tonally wrong. Now put yourself in that little Greek woman's shoes <laughs> and go. I just. I made this indie movie. It was a huge hit. It it surprised everyone. Mm-hmm. And the TV network goes, "The show's gonna suck balls. Do you want money? <laughs> <laughs> Do you say no? The, the you I, take the money. I mean, I think take so, it. I think. Sometimes the irony of these situations, though, is that the premise for that sitcom isn't really any worse than the premise for." any other sitcom. That it's movie like, was made for a sitcom, I feel like. You know, like, oh, my big Greek family. Yeah. You know, like, mm-hmm. huh? but I, I think can the, hear it. A lot of jokes are really corny. Maybe that's right. why it failed, because they they made a sitcom as a movie already. You can't revert back. Yeah. Like, yeah. like once, you've, once you've made it bigger than that, when you make it smaller again, you realize that it's just, it, you're back to being a small fish. It's true. In a small yeah. pond. Sometimes. Did, did Tom Hanks produce that sitcom? Oh, like he did the oh, movie? Oh, he did the movie. That's right. I, oh, I thought oh, that was just a random out. question. <laughs> yeah, he almost certainly put his name on yeah, it. Also, yeah. Who He's not gonna pay for, those typewriters aren't going to pay for themselves. <laughs> Let's see. Starring with the... Oh, yeah. mm. Rita Wilson's an EP on it. His oh, wife. Oh, okay. He's right. Right. It's yeah. Playtone. Yeah. It's Playtone production. Okay. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Always right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. He had no time. Said Rita, you take care of this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and my brother's gonna fuck you tonight because <laughs> I'm busy. <laughs> Sometimes it's just lightning in a bottle too. I also want to point out this this video here: War Games, sixteen things you don't need to. Do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh. Thanks for letting me watch. <laughs> <laughs> time um, to skip. <laughs> uh, there's there's also drama that gets out. so like uh-huh. mm-hmm. Serpico. Okay. I did not know Serpico had a yeah. TV show. What is what is Serpico for those who don't know, Elise? Because it is a bit of an I older love movie. Serpico. You want to hit it's Al Pacino. Serpico. Al Pacino wanna... in a Sidney Lumet production from the seventies. He's a cop, a good cop that goes into the force, and all the other cops are all shitty and corrupt, and they're all trying to get him to be shitty and corrupt. But he says, "No, fuck out. you. I'm going to clean it up from the inside, mm-hmm. and I'm going to have a cool beard." And I'm, gonna, but then all my druggy hustler, bad corrupt cops are gonna be kick my ass and be pissed at me and try to kill me. Now yeah. what's better? This are Carlitos' way. <laughs> this is better. Oh, okay. the, oh, I mean the movie is. I don't know about the TV show. And let me guess, <laughs> Al Pacino said, "I love this idea. I'm in." <laughs> I no. think he snorted a big fat line of coke and said, "All right, where do I sign? I need money." Oh, well, I think ev- well, I think it's everything. Yeah, they got David <laughs> Burney. Mm-hmm. I think that's another thing that you can look out for, especially in the drama world. But I guess it also applies to Ferris Bueller and stuff mm-hmm. too. Is when you have to downgrade. Like the right. only way this could get made is if we downgraded some major elements of it. Yeah. So like Matthew Broderick, Matthew Broderick didn't want to do the television show. So that tells you something. Al Pacino absolutely wasn't going to do the television show. So James we got Corbett. Dave Bernie, Dave, yeah, James Corbett, way too big for this show. And everyone's going, what? Yeah. And so, you know, you get some of these things and you're like, 
Uh, the the interesting the flip side is when you see a movie that had some actors in it and then they have bigger names for the TV oh, yeah, show. Yeah, like I'm I'm yeah. pulling up which, Fargo right now. Well, the bigger you have it on which, your list already, but that's probably the biggest the biggest yeah, one that's coming up. Fargo um is, is on the list of the ones that worked great. Yeah, it's great. Oh yeah, uh, love it. it. it show only, that shouldn't yeah. have worked, but here we are. Mm-hmm. Exactly, and there's so much like just talent behind the camera in front of the camera too, um and it's it's weird like. I guess also if you have a tried and true crew behind it, mm-hmm. produ- producing team behind it, actors are more likely to say like, yes. I also think we're in a different era of television too, mm-hmm. where someone can go, I'm adapting Fargo and no one goes, what? Like, are you out of your mind? Yeah. Like people say, oh, okay, there's potential there. Did everyone here watch Fargo? Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't want to, if I guess I'll spoiler territory here, just cause like, if you haven't seen it, go watch the show. But for those who have seen it, I do want to talk about the one part where I was the person where I watched it and spoilers incoming, uh, where I was like, are they adapting the movie or the show, what's happening? It took the spirit of the movie, but then also it plays within the universe of the movie, but it does its own thing. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't, it, it's not, you don't have to have seen the Far- movie, but it helps. Fargo, you, Fargo the show, me, Fargo basically means crime in a place you wouldn't expect it. Snow. Right, like crime from the most polite people, like well, more, that's like it, more importantly than that, I think it's that, but also they, uh, and I feel like other movies have done this before, where they're like, w- we want to make a Coen Brothers esque film or mm-hmm. something, and I always hate that. I'm like, like that to me, that's so cringeworthy. I'm like, I don't know, like why do you want to just make a style of other filmmakers, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. like and just ape them? But so when I watched that, that's kind of how I went into it. With I was kind of very skeptical, but then as I'm watching, I'm like, all right, this is very smart and well put together, and like they are, it's on the level of the Coen Brothers, I mm-hmm. think, you know, uh, well, or once, approaching it. When they got to the Oliver Platt episode where he it shows his childhood and it's the flashback of that, he his father found the money mm-hmm. that Steve Buscemi's character left. Yeah, that was cool. I, that was that cool moment ago. That was just enough. Uh-huh. This isn't Marvel Cinematic Universe level where it's like, Tony, I'm putting a squad together. We'll talk about that later. It was just more of like, oh, okay, that realistically makes sense that this character was affected by this movie. But if you're just a wa- you're just a viewer, that doesn't really matter. Right. I, I don't yeah. know. There, and there was enough nods of the Coen Brothers and stuff that it worked really well. To me, the most impressive part of the show, and it's not uh, connected to it being a movie or an adaptation of a movie, but what they did with the story, where in season one they essentially tell you what season two is going to be about and how it plays mm-hmm. out. They like mm-hmm. tell you the backstory, yeah. but then you're still watching season two on the edge of your seat thinking like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. And a lot of big names in that show. Yeah. Yeah. The first season was, uh, what's his name? Uh, from Kirsten Sherlock. Dunst and well, Colin Clemens. Hanks. Oh, well, and, uh, not Colin Hanks. Billy Bob Thornton. I was thinking Billy, Billy Bob as a villain is, I thought was on the level of a Coen Brothers movie villain yeah. mm-hmm. type, a, a sugar if you will, like, but he was his own character. He was this like true agent of chaos. And I loved his character so much. The creator behind it also did um, Legion, right? Yes, which I enjoyed Legion very much. And he's supposed to be doing the Doctor Doom movie. Who knows how that's gonna go? Why Doctor Doom gets his own yeah. film? I mean, they gave one to the Joker. Yeah, Why not Doom Man? Yeah, um, Victor Von Doom. He's got a ride at Dis- our uh, Islands of Adventure. Wow, wow. We one, went on it. <laughs> one uh, show that we we haven't talked about yet, The mm-hmm. Crow, Stairway to Heaven. Yes. Which I didn't know Ta- existed. Now th- because now we're in the the subject of things at work. <laughs> no. <laughs> this, <is an> <laughs> this is a a Canadian show. I was familiar with it. We're I was very Canadian. shocked that you weren't. Um Add it to the I'm clock. shocked that you weren't. Mm-hmm. Did you know there was a Crow TV show? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I, no one knew it was Canadian. Yeah, okay. It, it was withheld from us. Well, <laughs> when you say it's Canadian, you're saying it was produced in Canada because it was cheap, but it aired on American television. No, I don't. It said a Canadian show. But lots yeah. of stuff is made in Canada, mm-hmm. but it's it's made for cheap. And no one but this is a, a an actual Canadian show. Look, a Smallville a, was made in Canada. A Canadian goes, production company uh-huh. got it and made it for Canadian television. Right, but that's it's still, why I don't think it existed. It still America. had to air on Channel Thirteen on a Sunday. At I would have 2 PM. seen a crow. I can tell you this. <laughs> I would have seen this right. if it was airing on any sort of regular channel in America. I'm someone from Buffalo. I'm sure is going to tweet and go. Oh, I saw it, but Zach, that's because Buffalo is Canada. We got to ask Zach if he's <laughs> familiar with it. But like Zach would know it. It because I mean, listen, I love that they just kept churning out crow movies. <laughs> I thought it was great. Crow, Crow, uh, City of Angels, mm-hmm. Crow, Wicked Prayer, 
Crow. Stairway to Heaven. Stairway, Stairway to Heaven would have been in there. And Which, then another Crow movie. Uh, sadly, only 22 episodes aired. So you could treat it like a mini series, I guess. Sure, yeah. God, imagine being a fly on the wall on that set. First day of the filming, like, one. guys, yeah. one of 22 done. We got more to go. And they're like, that was miserable. I mean, I, I <laughs> Mark Dacascos is in it. This might be a situation of, of I mean, <sighs> aside from it being Canadian, someone saying, who is this for? <laughs> at, this po- at this point in time. Well, crow then, fans. Yeah, we got know? the Crow fan base who enjoys the comic book. And they go, there's a comic book? <laughs> but then you have, you know, Fargo getting made 20 years later. So that completely negates my point. Well, but I was mm. in defense of... The Crow, there was a, a television show that ran for a very, very long time that in some ways has more prestige than the film that preceded it. We're already talking about but the Crow. But I still don't know where it falls in the spectrum of, of better or worse than the original thing, which is the Highlander show. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I thought you were going to go with Buffy. <laughs> no. <laughs> that could have gone anywhere. No, no. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, I would say Buffy, Buffy the television show, if, even though I didn't watch it, it's mm. better than the movie. Right, I watched, uh, but I watched. But, but I think but, it's way I like the movie. The movie. But Duncan oh, McCloud, yeah. guys, he when you what is the name of the guy from Highlander? I only know Duncan McCloud. Mm-hmm. It's been too long. So this show somehow managed to expand on the world of Highlander in thrilling and amazing ways, mm-hmm. while also being worse <laughs> than the movie. So <laughs> you know, everyone's favorite actor, Lorenzo Lamas. But it ran for at is least four Lorenzo seasons. Lorenzo Lamas, I think no, you're thinking of Renegade. I am thinking of Renegade. They look the same. <laughs> at least four seasons. It, yeah, it got, it was a pretty big show. Oh, and they yeah. had Queen as the theme song. Whoa. So it had, well, it's the it Flash had the Gordon thing. thing the Crow right? had Led Zeppelin. Is that Alec Baldwin? I actually didn't <laughs> know that Highlander was a movie until later on. Mm. This show this show would just always come on, and I'd be like, oh, Highlander's on again. Man, it has a great theme song, and then I found out later, oh, it's based on a movie the, where right. there's a bunch of immortals who only die if you get your head cut off. And I was like, well, then they're not immortal. Because this was one of those <laughs> shows that aired. On like a Sunday afternoon. It's like USA's. Yeah. UPN. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah I was like this and Renegade back to back. And you're like, how? Oh, yeah. It's Adrian Paul. Paul. That's right. him. He looks like the other one. How dare you? What? <laughs> they look the same. I don't know. I mean, like, the concept of Highlander is great, too, because it's anyone adapting it goes, oh, it's guys with swords. They're, they're all Highlanders and they're immortals. Like, well, the movie's called Highlander because he was Scottish. <laughs> And uh, Sean Carney goes, you're all the Highlander. And he I goes, mean, that's that's a weird accent. We're even going, Spain. I think <laughs> no one cares. <laughs> Aside from probably like cheesy acting writing, and I think this this has a present a, a premise that has legs that you mm-hmm. can make it into a series TV yes. show. Yeah. yeah. Like, but well, it's objectively worse. <laughs> so how is it good? Well, but also the Highlander movies only got bad. The further they went, the more they try to explain things like the quickening mm-hmm. and what a Highlander is. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, like a show like that is like very passively watchable, you know. Whereas it doesn't take much. You're just kind of like, oh, like yeah. under the day. Like Ferris Bueller's Day Off is kind of like sitting there trying to like, like it's kind of like this troll of a TV show where you got to kind of be into the really into the very niche vibe that they're going for. Mm-hmm. I watched two full seasons of the 2015 MTV Scream TV show mm-hmm. and started a third. <laughs> and it started a third. And it, how does that show could go on? Uh, well. They they come up with cool. a, a, it's, it's not not at all really connected to the world of the screen movies. Okay, the writing's not awesome. The actors are trying to do what they what they can. Is Wes Craven back? He is not. He would have been dead by now. <laughs> He's definitely uh, dead. No way, really. Uh, what year did he die? A little not, while ago. Not too long ago. I think I remember the day it happened, and John Carpenter was like, "Really? Him first? <laughs> Damn." I'm going to live for another 2015. Oh, yeah, so, so he would have like ago. maybe just missed the premiere of it. Oh, <laughs> or been there just right he's for it. In the yeah, bed. dang it, um, Wes. Oh my God. You kind of saw greatness. But this is a situation where like the Scream movies have such a great meta aspect to them, and this show did not embody that spirit at all. Hmm. And, and they didn't even use like the ghost mask for the first two seasons. It's like what? wait, really oh, he, weird. he doesn't even get like it's a different killer that has a different mask. It's like it's the not only at all thing tied we know about to the screen yeah. movies okay. in any way. It's I'm, just there is a killer mm-hmm. who uses technology and awareness, yeah. right? To, to kind of so do they it. ever find the killer? They do, you know, at the end of the season. But then, of course, it does the thing where it like builds onto it in the mm-hmm. second season, where it's like maybe that wasn't the only killer. And it was Skeet Ulrich. No. Oh, first. okay. Um, what about Teen Wolf? It was his like <laughs> nephew's cousin's roommate. Yeah. A, uh, Wolf, Wolf, Wolf. a show that I think works in spades, and it's not really like a traditional show because it was on a streaming service, but Netflix's uh, Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. Incredible. Mm-hmm. It does something where I think is so admirable where it takes a mediocre movie and elevates it. Like it's so good mm-hmm. that it that it inf- better informs the film. Wait, you watch Dark Crystal and you're like, there's a story here. Mm-hmm. I don't know what I just watched, but mm-hmm. there's definitely a story here. Yeah. 
and so someone someone took that in a non-critical way and said, "I will figure out what the story <laughs> is here." And then so they they made this incredible epic thing that cost a hundred times, <laughs> uh-huh. and it, like it's a hundred times better in all things. And mm-hmm. again, this is what I was referring to when I was talking about having talent. They, instead of just having some, you know teenage New York actor tricked off the street to come and voice the guy in uh, uh, the Gelfling in the movie, whoever that is, mm-hmm. they had... <laughs> You're going to be this naked puppet. Yeah. They <laughs> play had, the flute. Yeah, sit and play the flute. Uh, <laughs> they, all, uh, every single act is Taron Edgerton, like everyone is a... Aquafina. No, Aquafina. Yeah. Simon Pegg. Yeah. Mark Hamill. Like, well, the fact that Taron Edgerton was like this huge fan and mm-hmm. was fanboying out about this movie and like... I'm the sort of person I'm like I'm, if if I had I had never seen the movie until after I watched the show because every because Jess like I've talked about this before she's like a labyrinth fan and she's like I never watched she's like saw Dark Crystal once it's weird I didn't like it so yeah. I'm like well I'm in I'm in no rush to see it mm-hmm. but there was a group of people who were like they saw the potential of what it was yeah. and saw what Jim Henson was going for mm-hmm. but was obviously limited by time budget and the technology of what they were able to do yeah. This Absolutely. really is just a cinematic achievement of of for the ages. From yeah. the creator of I, I The Incredible it. Hulk comes it, one of the greatest yeah. TV shows ever it's made. Incredible. It really is amazing. I think yes. we can say that like one of the tenets of a great uh, adaptation is that it, it better expands the w- universe of the movie, mm-hmm. which this definitely does. It also j- is able to draw on the graphic novels for as a re- as a source, yeah. so it has that in its favor. So that's, Wait, that's what novels. Yeah, that's what they adapted really mostly, right? Um, I forget his name. Yeah, there's a lot. A lot of the material, and of course, like the backstory of of Thra and everything, is from mm. the graphic novels too. Thra. Um, I forget his name. Uh, Brian. Brian. Brian no. Froud. Brian Froud is the he's one of Artist. the artists mm-hmm. that came back for the the show. Yeah. His whole family is like working on the show now, which is. Yeah. Pretty cool. He's like, we're a dark crystal family now. Yeah. <laughs> we make dark crystals. My father was a dark crystal, and his father before him was a dark I'm crystal. I'm tired of eating dark crystals, father. <laughs> you'll eat it, and you'll enjoy yeah. it. Mother is leaving you for <laughs> another dark crystal. Brian Froud, but there's someone There's someone else. I have to look and see. That's okay. okay that's okay. We're gonna, um, we're gonna be we're gonna be fine yeah, without we'll He's like, mention me, mention me. Oh, they're no, no, we're gonna keep doing dumb <laughs> British voices. Oh, Sorry, no. sir. That's a great one that works. I loved The Exorcist season one of The Exorcist show. <sighs> okay. Oh yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it was good. It was really good. It was How much good. It, is it in went it? weird towards the end, but the show was yeah, it was really good. Oh yeah, it has. It's, uh, it has Tina Davis. Davis Bueller guy. But, Cameron. Uh, Cameron. Cameron. Yeah. He, the actor has a name. It's the guy from it's Spin Connor. City. No, it's Connor from Succession. <laughs> well, it, it also takes the Exorcist story and it sets you up to think it's going to go one way and then it flips it. Yeah. Uh, well, they bring in a pretty hot priest, uh, which is awesome. He's he's easy he's, on the no, eyes. He's, he's hot. He's uh, he's one of the pilots, I think, from Rogue One. He's okay. in there briefly. Oh, no, maybe it was Force Awakens. Regardless. He's he's like this priest, but he's got amazing cheekbones, <laughs> and he's got a couple shirtless scenes. Not this loser, like that. Give me the hot oh, the European Irish one. one. He's not yeah. hot enough for me. Yeah, or yeah. Is he, I thought he was. Your, I don't know. I thought it was European playing an Irish one. I don't know. But I also got Gina Davis, who's still one of the, like she's still she's still rocking it. Gina yeah. Davis, I love her. Gina Davis is almost as old now as the old woman who played her at the end of. League of Their Own. Yeah. And I think right there. I think they owe her an apology because she looks fantastic. <laughs> well, like if you put them side by side. I when I was a kid always thought that was Gina Davis in makeup. Uh, yeah, I know. Oh yeah, everyone no, did. It's, it's amazing this casting. Is the best casting. Yeah, that uh, the the two best moments of accidental casting are that in the film Once Upon a Time in Mexico, where there is a scene with uh, Willem Dafoe playing like a Mexican drug lord, uh-huh. and they're like. There will be a scene where we need a guy who looks just like you because <laughs> we're gonna oh, yeah. do we're gonna do facial reconstruction on him and make <laughs> yeah. it look like you died. And then when they were making the movie, they went, "Shit, we need someone who looks like Willem Dafoe." And <laughs> they found Mexican. this little they found the, yeah they found this Mexican guy who looks like Willem Dafoe. And he's like he's like he's like I'm going to rip your face off. And he's like, "See, it's I, amazing." I bet shopped around somewhere was an El Mariachi uh, El Mariachi uh, TV series. 100% oh, absolutely. Yeah. Based on the time that movie was big and popular. Yeah, yeah. They carry guitar Desperados. cases. Desperados. Oh, man. I'd probably watch that. I would absolutely actually, watch yeah. that show. Let's get it going. Oh, man. You bring Johnny Depp in for mm-hmm. one episode where he's the... Man, I forgot about this show. What? Are they doing more? There was a second season. Oh. There was? We started it, I think. Did we? Yeah, Did I think so. I would, I would probably recommend just watching this one as a miniseries, though. Treat the first season as... Well, they didn't continue it, right? It's they just... did. 
Wait. There was a second season. No, no, no. I mean, after second season, it's that I don't know. Wait, did you finish it? I didn't finish the second season. Oh, but, love it so much. <laughs> but I thought it was awesome because it takes some of your expectations about The Exorcist, what you know, like from the movie and the sequels, and then it upgrades them, I think, in a contemporary way, but then also like in a, you know, sometimes maybe less cheesy way. And like, of course, it's got young priests. She which, thinks hot. she's going to puke green, but she pukes blue or some weird color. Take so up my your expectations. Um, uh, well, a uh, question for you, Ryan, because you're a big movie nerd. I am. Um, what was that Exorcist movie where they basically refilmed it? It was like the fourth one or something like that? I don't know the oh, answer I heard to the story. We, I want to look into this just because the, the, the Skarsgård one that they did, the, okay. like one of the more recent ones, there's a trailer out there somewhere of like the original one that they shot where the studio went, that's not what we want. And then they just shot another movie. So there's like two Exorcist William movies out Freakin there. William Friedkin filmed The Exorcist twice in a row? Is Something that what like you're that. Yeah. Was it Friedkin? I don't know. I don't know who that is. He's the director of the first Exorcist. Oh, no. That's the, no, he's the guy who was like, I, I don't agree with this movie anymore. I got my money. I love Jesus now. No, he, he, he he's still making like docu- – his last movie was a documentary on like a real Exorcist. Oh, stuff. Snap. So he's like – Deep into this stuff. No, I, I okay. That's sorry. At least that'll be for another time. I didn't know if anyone else knew about Exorcist lore. No, but I, I would recommend watching some of the old. I used to have a Exorcist. I think like what anniversary would it have been twenty five or thirty oh, anniversary. It was a VHS, but oh. it had uh, like a documentary on it as well, mm. and it was great. Like all the BTS stuff about the production, because I mean there was lots of weird stuff happening during the production. Mm. That's all super interesting. The movie got way too hyped for me when I was like, it's so scary. It's gonna <laughs> blow. No, I was like, I watch him. There's this, uh, he, he tells this story where he's like, he, he was making a, a sorcerer over in like Africa or something, and all these, everyone in the whole town, he said, what are those, that, what's that caravan of people doing over there? Mm-hmm. Like the whole town is leaving, and they go, some local person was like, they heard that the director of The Exorcist was in town, oh. and uh, yeah. they wanted to leave because that movie had such bad stigma, you know? Crazy. Yeah, Do bad juju. Yeah, I wish I could clear out a whole town. Yeah, so right. Ring, done. Ring, uh, ring was scarier. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people always make the comparison. <laughs> <laughs> some other great ones and feel free to chime in with what you think makes them great mm-hmm. Friday Night Lights mm-hmm. are you a big football guy I am so is yeah. that kind of like your gospel of, of fiction and um it has cool football scenes for sure. Like the movie, I really love the movie. Like uh, Peter Berg, the, the Peter Berg, uh, Billy Bob Thornton, explosions in the sky. Uh, what, what, <laughs> music is, what, video. Is, what is the appeal of the show? Because I haven't seen it yet, and everyone says you it's, should. It's, it's, it's very much like a high school soap opera kind of show that just oh, happens man. to be around football. But you know, okay. it's uh, football it, means everything to so this town. Yes, how does it like elevate or expand the world of the movie? Well, you, uh, you know, the, a football team is a perfect kind of microcosm to, you know, you're, you get, you're, you've got all these personalities working together on a team, but then they have their outside life and it's interfering on the team, so, you know, and so it, then you... But it's not the same characters, right? No, it has pretty much... It, it it's takes, a different town. It's no, a, same town. Okay, the, the, same uh, team. Odessa, Texas, where it's just, like you said, football, all football, yeah, yeah. you know, they're born and bred in football. Yeah. And then... Uh, 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 but so yeah, that's the premise. It's the same premise of just this town that goes mm-hmm. crazy for football. Is Except there, the quarterback gets paralyzed. Yeah, in the first episode. Oh, first episode. Okay, good to know. Is there any point where he turns to his dad and goes, "I don't want your lives," because <laughs> <laughs> otherwise I'm not watching, and I need a whipped cream bikini mm-hmm. and an overweight uh, lineman with the number 69 jersey because that's funny. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, um, Westworld's a very like obvious and relevant one. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, right. we're we're Adaptation. also we're in this weird age, right, where there were movies that came out in the 70s and we're like people were like I don't remember that, like yeah. Logan's Run and stuff like that. Where you go, yeah, let's just make him do a show now. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. that's part of it is like, oh, these these are great concepts, but the movies are like antiquated or outdated now. So yeah. let's revisit those, Cause, cause those West, concepts. Because Westworld was more or less recreated with Jurassic yeah. Park. Same author, I know, as Michael Crichton. But mm-hmm. I believe Westworld was directed by Michael Crichton. By Michael Crichton. And, I, and I'm almost positive it featured some of the very first special that's effects cool. in a movie. It was a 3D hand. Wow. wow. Well, but Crazy. the interesting thing about Westworld, we'll see when season three comes out. I watched season one and season two. And season two, I was like, eh, have we exhausted this concept? Like, yeah. Maybe we got as far as we could. And so maybe certain shows work as a limited series television show. Mm -hmm. Uh, We'll see where they go in this next I think they kind of went – because I I, I was super on board with the first season. But similar to you, like like for one, it was just too many episodes, too long, kind of too redundant, I thought. Mm -hmm. Like, And I think that, yeah, uh, what's-his-face – 
Jonathan Nolan is just he goes too, he gets too dense sometimes for mm-hmm. his own good. It's like mm-hmm. just keep it simpler. Yeah. yeah. So Hannibal's yeah. another one which I haven't seen, but Adam, you you uh, praise it. Great show. Yeah. Totally loved it. I was Slow actually really there. blown away that it was on network television. I think it was on NBC. It is a violent, violent show with some naked bodies and people getting their guts ripped out while they're still alive, like crazy, like and just left to like kind of figure it out and. Will they get sewn back together? Who knows? So Silence of the Lambs comes out and it fucking rules. And Great the movie. Sweeps the Oscars and stuff. And mm-hmm. what, how does how does this you know in terms of the adaptationness so of it? It's like, a um, I believe it was Brian Fuller who did it. Correct me if I'm yeah, wrong on that one. Yeah, Brian Fuller. So you got great talent behind it. Yeah, I, yeah. I think that's Adam's Family Guy. Pushing right? Daisies, Dead Like Me, American Gods. What? Oh, no, I'm Family sorry. I, um, I get him mixed up with uh, the other one. Sorry, but either way. Sorry, yes. Uh, he's the guy from Pushing Daisies, which is another one of my favorite shows. Um, but, yeah, he did an adaptation of – it's basically – it's the Hannibal story. Mm-hmm. So it starts off – man, where does it start off? It starts off pre Silence of the Lambs, all that stuff. Okay. It's not even Starling. It's this other character. Who it starts Mindhunter times? Basically, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's Mads Mikkelsen playing this, like, very iconic role, and it does a great job. Okay. Uh, and then – I don't know. Like it's it's a show that it it is almost like a limited series at least because then it I believe the last season which I actually didn't get to finish because it wasn't available in any streaming platform. I had to buy them episode by episode, and then something happened with my credit card. I need to finish it. Either way, <laughs> it ends up becoming just basically the third season is Red Dragon, but okay. it was becoming way too similar to the movie. I was like, some of the shots were just like almost identical, like. The Philip team. Seymour Hoffman riding down in a wheelchair on fire. How'd they get him back <laughs> after he died of a heroin overdose? Yeah, because the first movie, oh, The Silence of the Lambs, is kind of like a police procedural, pretty much, like in terms of the structure of it. And then this is more of like you're hanging out with a cannibal. It's like Dexter well, or something. Well, this or, is also Hannibal Lecter before he's caught. Yeah. So he is a he's a psychologist that this agent has to go see because he has weird hallucinations and deals with weird things. But he's basically seeing the guy who he's trying to catch. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's really well shot. Like, they do these beautiful montage moments where Hannibal's making dinner, but it's people's flesh. <laughs> <laughs> that, that to me feels like Yummy. a case of a lot of talent behind the camera. Uh, and in front, all over the place. <laughs> uh, we'd be remiss not to mention a couple other shows like Clueless, Buffy. Uh, I didn't know Clueless had a show. That's yeah. Cool. Uh, Sarah Donald Connor Faison Chronicles. What we do in the shadows is like a fun new one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wet Hot American Summer is Wet probably my number yeah. one on this list. They really? did a great job. Oh, yeah. I thought that was like. Dark Crystal? Probably, okay. honestly. Like when I saw Wet Hot American Summer TV show, I was like, this is everything I want in TV. Like, do you like uh, both seasons? Um, yeah, I did. I, I liked the first one more. Yeah, <clears throat> me too. The first one's probably, yeah, was significantly more. But I was, I mean, it's also kind of like, where do you go from this? It Kind of like we were saying before, it's like a little of that goes a long way. Yeah, yeah. And I think that in the second one, they were kind of stretching, you know, and it was probably good that it ended. But hmm. that first season, man, like, oh, man. like every arc that happened was hilarious. When I saw it at the time of seeing it, Wet Hot American Summer, Summer was like the funniest movie I'd ever seen mm-hmm. in my entire life. And then when the show came out, I was like, well, I'll just enjoy it for existing. And it had some of the moments that – it had some moments that made me laugh harder oh, yeah. than the movie did. Definitely. And I was like, that's incredible. Like when they go to visit Michael Sarah, and he goes like, hold on my calls. And it's just – and <laughs> it's, there's no the button. Table. It's just a desk. <laughs> it's just hold on my calls. Let's go. Like, and I was like, wow, this is yeah. incredible. I mean, the cast is all so lovable. Yeah. Like, you, you love all these people. You grew up with all these actors. <laughs> it's the David Wayne. And talking about Wayne. just how yeah. they, like, uh, how you build on uh, the movie and stuff, the whole concept of them playing, uh, making it a prequel to the movie, and they're all 20 years yeah. old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that never got old to me the yeah. whole time. Yeah. It, like, it still makes me laugh just watching this trailer. Yeah. <laughs> um, after the break, we're going to talk about uh, something that's that's one of I, – I love – it's not as much a trend anymore, but it was big in the 90s, and I really loved it, which was animated adaptations of live-action movies. Yeah, that, that is were uh, usually rated, rated R. R. Yeah. 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 I want to see um, the Hannibal uh, cartoon. Yeah. But uh, before we get to that, here's a word from our sponsor, Quip. Quip, makers of the Quip electric toothbrush, want you to know the one single discovery that matters most for your dental care. It's simply this. 
creating good habits. That means brushing for two minutes twice a day and flossing regularly, no matter what brand you use. Quip makes that simple, starting with an electric toothbrush, refillable floss, and anti-cavity toothpaste. Quip's electric brush has sensitive sonic vibrations with a built-in timer and 30-second pulses to guide a full and even clean. The Quip floss dispenser comes with a pre-marked string to help you use just enough. Plus, Quip delivers fresh brush heads, floss, and toothpaste refills to your door every three months with free shipping, so your routine is always right. Join over 3 million healthy mouths and get Quip today starting at $25. And if you go to getquip.com film right now, you'll get your first refill free. That's your first refill free at getquip.com slash film. Spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash F-I-L-M. Quip, the good habits company. Thank you, Quip, for your sponsorship. We are back and we're talking about, this is like a weird 90s trend, I feel like. A little bit of like 80s too, but yeah, if you got it, if you made a live action sh- movie that was successful, maybe a little bit risque for kids, mm. you certainly got an animated kids series. If Jim Carrey's name was anywhere near it, yeah, <laughs> you got a cartoon. Like Adam, you pointed out that all th- the three big Carrey movies it sort of set him yeah, on the course I, I of his think, career. I think at one point, Ace Ventura, The Mask, and Dumb and Dumber all had three separate cartoons on three different networks, and they drew Jim Carrey three different ways. <laughs> yeah. So it'd be like, CBS, Ace Ventura, NBC. <laughs> no one shared assets. Here's, here's the thing. By the time they were doing this with Jim Carrey movies, I... It only worked for me as a kid if I hadn't seen the movie. If right. you if you're a fan of the movie, the cartoon almost never satisfies your desire to have mm. the movie. It's just almost like it's like when they make Monopoly and they're like kids aren't going to be able to do this math. Mm-hmm. They're too stupid. Mm-hmm. Let's make Monopoly kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And it's like we're at the we're, we're at the amusement park and we only pay in pennies mm-hmm. like and it's like all stupid and dumbed yeah. down for idiot children. That's what these cartoons are. You can't go backwards. Yeah, once you play Monopoly, yeah. you can't play Monopoly. You can't kids. go back. But <laughs> if you haven't seen Beetlejuice because it maybe it looks scary or yeah. whatever, or because you've tried to watch it before and it's a nightmare, mm-hmm. like, <laughs> and then Beetlejuice the show comes on and it's just about this fun-loving ghost who yeah. you know goes out with this girl Lydia and mm-hmm. they party and stuff. You're like, oh, this is it's, super fun. But then if, it's funny because if you're a kid and you watch the cartoon and then you watch the movie, you're like. Who? You're like, that not Beetlejuice. Or, or like, <laughs> why, who's this Gina Davis and Alec Baldwin character yeah. that are 99% oh, yeah. of the movie? Yeah. And then also, why is he sexually abusing this little girl? Yeah. And, so uh, they did get married, is what the cartoon <laughs> says. Yeah, well, you always point to, James, the fact that there would be these R-rated and mature movies made in the 90s, but then they would make toys marketing them to kids. Oh, yeah. And this feels like the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. They're trying to get two demos, yeah. Yeah. but yeah. they're using different properties. Now we just make one thing so broad mm-hmm. that parents will want to see po- po- Detective Pikachu, and it's also made for the kids mm-hmm. as well. We used, to, we used to make multiple properties <laughs> all within the same brand. This, yeah, this. There was Bill and Ted got one. Police Academy had Police a cartoon. Academy, yeah. RoboCop. Whoa. RoboCop had a cartoon and a toy line. Can- I, Candy. I, I think, well, not based on anything. But, but based yeah. on John Candy's life. Uh, I mean, but that's, they were that's like, kind of a Bobby's World sort of thing okay. too. Which is that's another one where like Howie Mandel is known for putting mm-hmm. a condom over his head and blowing it up. Give him a cartoon. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, who will do the voice of young Bobby? And he's like, oh, he's a surgical it. glove. Don't be, don't be, don't insult his humor. Like, he uh, almost life, died. Remember Life with Louis? That's a whole other thing oh, too. Oh, where I like, love. Yeah. Loved life. Well, no, but it's just it's like the same thing. They I, were like, "Who's here's this comedian that no child has ever heard of mm-hmm. before?" Yeah, but he's clearly a funny person. Mm-hmm. So let's give this comedian his his own show. Well, but it can't be him because no kid's gonna want to look at that. He has live action interstitials in it right. too. That's to warm you to his. <laughs> that's to warm yeah. you to him. Well, it's always like, "Who's this overweight Louis. man?" And he goes, he goes oh, "Now here's God. a story about my dad." Yeah, he's like, <laughs> "Louie, pull your pants up, but oh, <laughs> dad, oh, oh, oh. yeah." Anyway, um, <laughs> it that's was, not a, <laughs> it's a horrific show. Yeah, yeah. I love this show. This was I this was, was as fun. close to King of the Hill as I could get. I loved it because I fe- yeah I felt like as a kid it wasn't talking down to me hmm. because it was a little bit like uh, abrasive. Mm-hmm. I just yeah. kept waiting like uh, the Wonder Years for the dad to have a heart attack in one of the episodes and be like, and that's how my dad died. Oh yeah, <laughs> but that was the last know, episode. Yeah, can you find the uh, while you're bringing up James Bond stuff? Can you can you find the RoboCop uh, toy where he had a. A you, gun. He had a gun that they you, all were guns. Yeah, all of the RoboCop toys were guns. Yeah, this basically, one? you know those those pop guns that you if would you buy. You ever wonder why we have <laughs> issues with this in America? <laughs> Look no further than the RoboCop toys, yeah. where every toy is a gun. <laughs> <laughs> one is two guns. Yeah, 
I remember I, I was badass. visiting I was visiting some family in Alaska and they had toy guns like that, but they look like real like, yeah, look yeah. like desert eagles. Uh-huh. And they're, they're like, bang, bang, they're as loud as a gun. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is, the best thing too is when they have to figure out the rest of it. So did you see it was like, <laughs> it's like Birdman Jackson and, <laughs> and Ace. It's like, no one's in yeah. this movie. Well, There's just, a woman. They never even made the woman into the toy. I mean, to be fair, I was raised watching Robocop. It's one of the first movies I saw when I was like three or four. What yeah. the fuck? And I loved it because my parents were like, yeah, he's fine. He'll figure it out. <laughs> Show him that in Princess Bride. Mm-hmm. But. No child should be watching Robocop <laughs> no, when it's a dude sniffing cocaine off a woman's breast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like, but that's uh, the same thing. They were like, "Well, we made, we invested money in this brand. We got to get kids to like it, mm-hmm. but we can't. They can't buy tickets to the movie, so let's make something else." Right. I honestly, as stupid as it sounds, I think as an adult, I prefer this because then you get a Robocop that's Robocop, yeah. and you get a cartoon and toys that are toys, mm-hmm. as opposed to a watered down version of Robocop. That is the mo- that is the only product you get. I think a lot of what we are, are appealing to such a broad demo. They want to see if they can capture audiences between eight years old and thirty five, mm-hmm. and if they can catch that whole thing, then great. But they make one thing. We used to split it into at least two. Mm-hmm. I think they. I think uh, just like TV and how. There only used to be a couple channels has something to do with that, too, because, you mm-hmm. know, kids and adults used to watch the same stuff, and yeah, then you yeah. see the trailer for RoboCop, and the kid's like, oh, cool, and then, like, oh, it's on, and you have a Happy Meal toy for it now, or, you know, there's a toy for it, so it's like you're you're watching the same stuff enough. Now, you would never see this the same shit that, you know, the kids yeah, are yeah. watching, because we have so many different places to watch. Yeah. yeah. At least you brought up the Men in Black cartoon. I did. Did anyone watch this? This feels like one of no. the last... Because it actually looked cool. It was good. It was yeah. really well animated. Cool. Yeah, like I kind of wish the newer movies maybe watch the cartoon and like, hey, look at this, you know, funny dark humor mm-hmm. sort of thing. It has like an Aeon Flux kind of look to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But that seems a, at least it seems to be capturing sort of a, what the magic was of the first movie. Yeah. Which was produced by who was the guy? Adam Sandler guy. Bru- uh, 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 not uh, Brian Ferry. Very Sonnenfeld. Yeah. Which. Cool he ha- brothers. He has a lot of whimsy. Him mm-hmm. and Brian Fuller, like they're masters of whimsy in mm-hmm. a weird way. And like the first uh, Men in Black was what Tim Burton and yeah, as I like, had like he was one of the producers on it. It just had such a yeah, Sonnenfeld like just has a whimsical vibe. And the rest of the movies just feel so stale. There, there is the show at least seems to get that one cartoon on that list that you had at least that I would say is better than the property on which it is based. Which or is James Jason Vaughn Jr. No, no, no. Uh. Clerks, the animated series. Oh, Big American Party. Kirk, Clerks, the movie is like, oh wow, that's impressive that some guy made a movie for five grand for or five, whatever. maxing out his credit cards on the weekend, and he clearly has a sense. Yeah. He has a style and a sense. I don't know how funny it actually is. No, I agree. And, and I don't know how good the acting actually is or the filmmaking, but wow, very impressive. He's gone on to obviously make a name for himself, Kevin Smith. But Cop this out. cartoon based on that movie is great. It's wacky and absurd. It has Alec Baldwin. It has so much weird stuff. Like, honestly, it's kind of like Rick and Morty type mm decades before Rick and Morty where well, there's a lot of weird they they play with things the second my favorite thing is the second episode they the main characters get trapped have you seen this show no. oh my oh. gosh the second episode they get trapped in a freezer okay and then and then they it, they do a flashback episode yeah so they basically treat it like any other show would treat a flashback oh, we're trapped in this freezer hey remember that time and they show a clip from the first episode and then ultimately ultimately at one point they're like you guys remember that other time and they flap and they show just show the beginning of this oh, episode yeah. where right. they get trapped in the freezer like it's it's really really great and really absurd I think there's only like six episodes what do you like think that. like the difference like do you think that it's just a medium that enables absurdity more. The Maybe. fact that with animation cool. you can just be like, there's a spaceship now. Yeah, but you I think know? they also put it on like ABC at a time when it was either Disney was buying it or it was just a primetime show that wasn't hitting, a la Capital Critters. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So they're just, you know, they just took it off the air as quickly as they could. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, there's a similar but different show like Clone High, which has a similar look and vibe and everything else. But it was on MTV too, where mm-hmm. the barrier to entry, yeah, it was on ABC in the 90s, or sorry, late 2000s. But um, yeah, if you haven't seen the clip, the um, the one where the uh, the basketball team—I forget which one it is—but they're like they're giving the verdict, 
and then it stops right there and goes, unfortunately, the rest of this episode was lost. Like, so the rest of it was finished by the Korean animation studio. <laughs> yeah. And it's, there's like one, it goes off the rails where like all of a sudden it becomes like a Japanese anime, but then they, they go to the Korean animators where they're working yeah. and they're like, like there's like a it's rat. Like a guy cracking a whip. <laughs> yeah. 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 And they're like, everybody working. He's like, we are slaves. And they're like, Tom Cruise, come save us. And like, it's like, what the fuck is going <laughs> yeah, on? And yeah. then the show ends. And you're like, that was amazing. Yeah. I would love more. And it also has one of my favorite bits that I've ever seen in a cartoon where a bunch of people, a transformer shows up, turns into a car, everyone gets in, they drive off, and when he goes back in transformer mode, all this blood comes out. Ferris <laughs> <laughs> driving, how can this be? Yeah. But like like those Rick and Morty level things where it's like if you blink, you miss the joke. Yeah. And there's just like some really good animation and like smart stuff in there. But Also, yeah. um, the uh, it doesn't happen very often, but this show beat... Arrested development to a joke. It's true. Where they have a court case and Judge Judge Reinhold is the judge. They now presider, presider oh. the Honorable Judge Reinhold, mm-hmm. which then is reused in Arrested Development, one of the smartest shows ever, <laughs> smartest comedies ever written. Mm-hmm. And it's like, wow. They beat him to oh. that. Also, the best part about it is Judge Reinhold sitting up there and he's not he's he's pretty bored. And then uh and then the door bursts open, and it's it's an animated oh. <laughs> Axel Foley. He's like, "Hey, Judge, let's get out of here!" And he's like, "He's like Axel!" And then he goes, he <laughs> leaves the courtroom, runs out, and then it's just them hiding in alleyways, putting bananas at people's <laughs> like, exhaust pipes. <laughs> exhaust pipes. I've seen they this. just do it to like four or five different cars in a row, and then it fades out to reveal him <laughs> to reveal him sleeping in his bed with his wife, going, "Axel, <laughs> Axel!" And his wife wakes him up, and goes, "Judge, what's the matter?" He's like. No, there was it the dream again? And he goes, yeah, it was. <laughs> well, I think you, uh, did you watch this when it aired? The, oh, no. The, no, no like, did. I mean, I'm reading the Wikipedia. It says that this found a second life in DVD. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's, um, that's when I got it. It was like this and uh, Family Guy, except those went two different ways. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I think you're fair in saying this was ahead of its time. Yeah, it definitely um, felt that way. Yeah. I wanted to to move on if you guys are done talking about never oh okay <laughs> Man. Um, there's a segment that I, I wanted to do for a really, really long time on Dude Soup but since for the last couple of weeks and the, the next few weeks to come we're handling producing hosting duties for Film House I was like oh this might fit better on Film House mm-hmm. um, and it's a little just segment called This Weekend in Box Office History mm. where we sort of run down What's what was happening at the box office at any given time, mm-hmm. okay. and kind of see what we think has had lasting. Because there are movies that you know they're they're charting up there, and it's like I have no idea what that movie even is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so we kind of like run them down, see if that was a good a good weekend, and sure. and mm-hmm. see where it goes. You know. And, and, and fr- from how long ago? What's like the 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 weekend I chose to look at was uh, from this corresponding to the weekend we're in now, which is like the February. First through second ish weekend, mm-hmm. so it's it's February second through fourth, nineteen ninety. Oh, I remember that weekend fondly. Uh, what were you doing? Yes. It was a great weekend. Going to the movies. Yeah, I was learning how to not pee my pants. <laughs> how do you learn that anyway? But pee in your pants is cool. So what was consider me Miles Davis? What were the uh, the top? What was the top movie of that weekend? Top movie, of course. Would it be top movie in twenty twenty? I don't know, but Driving Miss Daisy. <laughs> That be uh, had a lot of hit pieces uh, uh, yeah. being written about it today. I well, feel like the uh, the already the most interesting standout about this list. I know what you're going to say is that the it's not it's its second week. It would appear to be its second week. It's still number one. And well, it's eight it, weeks. Oh, oh, yeah. No. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Eight weeks. Oscar and buzz. look at the percentage. It went up. It went up. Mm-hmm. That's hard to do. Well, I mean, well, if you that's think what about it, it used to be back it, then. Is like it probably just, got nominated for an Oscar, right? Uh-huh. It did. We we know. So oh, you know what? So it, it's the going Oscars back. Are coming up, yes. mm-hmm. like in a couple of weeks, back in 1990s. So yeah. everyone's going back to watch Driving Miss Daisy. Also, the the like uh, expo- exponential blockbuster is still kind of a relatively new thing. Mm-hmm. The fact that a Star Wars movie come out, make a billion dollars, and Disney goes. Sorry, we missed the mark. Yeah, well, yeah. It, it only matters what you made in the first three days of this movie's release, even though it took eight years to make. Yeah, and China. Yeah. Look who's talking is in its 17th week right now. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know. That was the other thing, too. <laughs> movies were in theaters for 17 yeah. weeks, yeah. Yeah. not uh, a weekend, and then it's on DVD and Netflix. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, Stella. <laughs> is that the David Wayne show? I was, I, was, I don't know what that is. That's why Stella. I was like, I was uh, looking at this, I believe that is a like, sequel to A Streetcar Named Desire. <gasps> is it? Yes. You're, you're right. Yes. It's uh, not. All right. So uh, is it not? It's no. not. I was just kidding. Don, oh, okay. I thought you were maybe serious. No. Stella is a feisty woman working in a bar when she meets and falls for the suave charms of the young Dr. Steve Dallas. Love it. Yeah. 
Uh, I mean, they start also, in despair, think about it. It's February 1990. It's a new decade. You're like, babe, what are we going to do? We're not, there's nothing on TV. It's going to be this Ferris Bueller show. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to die of AIDS, probably. <laughs> mm-hmm. And we all have Coke bloat. So, what do you want to do? See Stella? Whatever. No one cares. Let's just drink a caffeine free diet people Coke. don't care anymore now. Look, let's just get a Zima. <laughs> all right. You and me, we head on down, get some Pop Rocks, and we'll watch a movie. <laughs> Anyway, born right. um, on the Fourth of Ooh, July. Fourth of July, Adam. Oliver Never heard Stone, of it, baby. Adam, look at that. Oh, Ryan doesn't know that. Oh, yeah. Do you not know that? Oh. Ron about Kovic what? is his uncle. The movie's about my uncle. Really? Yeah. Yes. No way. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. That's insane. Small Adam world. Technically knows Tom Cruise. Wow. I haven't met him yet. Uh, <laughs> I feel like if I were to run into him, he would say no. <laughs> but uh, wow, he'd probably be extremely that's, nice. That's all I've ever that's heard. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Tango and Cash. Tango and Cash. Great. But it dipped a lot. Mm-hmm. Dipped well, a lot. What, how many weeks? Seven, Seven weeks? Week. Flashback. I don't know. It, Flashback's coming in at number five. I don't know what that movie is. Sequel to Flashdance. Mm. Are you making that up again? Um, well, it's a prequel, but yes. It's actually a streetcar <laughs> named Desire. Yeah. Flashback. Dennis Hopper, Kiefer Sutherland, Carol Kane. Yeah, you Never could just make whatever movie. you wanted back then. Didn't mm-hmm. matter. Is it an Abby Hoffman movie? Is you get talking to the microphone. Abby Hoffman movie? <laughs> like, <laughs> what, what's just astounding to me is like there are so many movies that get made, and then you never, th- like, a person pours in their heart and soul to this. Mm-hmm. It makes a lot of money, and then you never hear from it. Yeah, again. like that little movie right there, Little Mermaid. Never what happened. <laughs> Tremors what happened? is in its third week right now. That's awesome. I feel like Tremors was good, possibly though. one of those movies that found more life on VHS. I think so. I think you're right. And, it, and then uh, it was it became like a blockbuster darling, blockbuster yeah. video darling, uh, where you go, oh, there's a new Tremors. They have legs now, <laughs> but that won't be in theaters. There's the massive hit down there, Back to the Future Part Two, with 111 million dollars, which would be a failure for anything else. <laughs> <laughs> and today, oh, well, that's got to be like 200 million in today's something. money, something maybe. Uh, just know. for inflation, it's 4.6 billion dollars. <laughs> Cinema weeks. Paradiso down there. I love that movie. Okay. Wow. Yeah, yeah, things on there like Glory, Always. War of the Roses. Roger and Me is getting fucking sloshed. <laughs> yeah, it's a documentary, though. A lot of classics yeah. on this list. Yeah. That means like, you know, Detroit's bad. <laughs> it's interesting. I think, you know, taking a look and reflecting backwards can help us look forward. How so? Interesting. I don't know. Explain yourself. Glory <laughs> made 11. Wait, does that say 11? Glory made uh, total gross 11 million. That's that's not, not good. 11.6. I didn't, did it not do well? I don't think Glory was a hit. All right. It, it got, uh, what's his name? Samuel Jackson an Oscar. Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman an Oscar. Oh, my God. Mm. You know who's in that okay. movie? <laughs> Shut up. A little, a little <laughs> guy <laughs> named Ferris Bueller's Day Off. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There he is. Matthew Andrew Broderick. Is. is in it. Carrie Ellis is in it. Denzel Washington. I've never seen this. You've never seen Glory? No. Oh, it's oh, awesome. Oh, man, it's great. At least you got four hours like free tonight? It's like a feel-bad feel movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh, the Great War, where everyone died, no matter what. <laughs> I, I like how there's a new movie that just came out, and it's number 10, Heart, and it's called Heart Condition. Who would name their movie that? <laughs> well, it's probably Why a movie pun. movie's called Cancer? <laughs> you know, it's probably a pun. It's David Hart falls in love on the street or whatever. Right. Bob Hoskins, Denzel Washington. Bob yeah, so Hoskins stars as Jack Mooney, a police officer. The two rivals compete in the same workforce area to, in their community to help bring down the drug rate. Hmm. What? They received a 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, Mayfair. actually, if you, if you go back oh. one page, Rotten at least. Didn't exist. Can you go oh, back just one? Where on the side there, Google, or I guess IMDb says, racist police officer oh, yeah. Jack oh, Mooney. Oh, <laughs> Now we got a movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry, Bob. Maybe they'll cast you in Hook or something. Denzel Washington's in that one, too. He's, yeah. he's competing against himself in he glory. He's failing yeah. at the box office. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's like, it's not working, Spike. Can you help me? He goes, I have an idea. <laughs> well, thank you guys for getting to the bottom of this TV show movie debacle. What? And uh, for, you know, taking a little stroll down movie memory lane with mm-hmm. me. And also thank you to our sponsor, Quip. We didn't even mention MASH. We didn't mention Mash. I thought Mash right. probably the best well, one that's ever the made. Biggest, I, the biggest one, yeah. yeah. That goes without saying. I thought it was the other way around. I thought it was show, then movie. No. 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 It was the movie, movie then show. show. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Altman, baby. I like Hawkeye. <laughs> <laughs> it's the kind of thing where the conjuring starts is this story about these paranormal detectives. Mm-hmm. And they're and to set the ambiance, there just happens to also be a creepy doll in it. That's right. just to, that's just to get the ball rolling for the actual movie to begin. And they made a movie. About now the there are three doll. movies about the doll, <laughs> you know, and one about a painting that was just hanging in the background. Those, like 